hello everyone again and welcome to my channel so excited to be back again and actually talk to you about a specific example that i told you that i'm going to actually take a look at now we talked about oxidation state and how you can convert it into the electron count and i gave you a little bit of examples on our previous video but in here i'm going to show you more examples and i'll kind of a little bit touch on how they are kind of related to their geometry or shapes. Now in here we're going to see specific group which is the transition metal located in the D block region and first example in here is looking at this particular compound with potassium attached to an ionic complex in here which has platinum in it and since we know that potassium which is a cation having a positive charge of plus one then by default this other side here has a negative charge which is one so negative one is the total combination of charge that is present in this particular complex and we're just going to dive into this now platinum here is unknown and we need to find what that is but we do know that we have an anion in here which is chlorine and that has a negative three because we have three of those ions in here so since that is in there we have a negative three and in here we have ethane and ethane has here zero charge because it's neutral and what we have as a result is that it's all equal to negative one now if you move this over here what we have is platinum which is equal to negative one plus 3 and negative 1 plus 3 gives us platinum to be positive 2 so in this case platinum is positive 2 it loses 2 electrons in this particular complex to so have an overall charge of negative 1 and then this interacts ionically with potassium to form a salt in here so an example of this particular structure is what we have in here where we have the geometry of our compound will talk more about specific rules of geometry relationship with our D electron count and from this particular positive 2 here we do know that initially this is actually positioned in the tenth group which is actually in this particular region that is platinum and then 10 electrons minus 2 electrons that were lost in here gives us eight electrons so our d electron count in here is d8 so in this particular case d8 they mostly exhibit this particular geometry relating to platinum which is a square planar in here so that's about it for the first example now second example in here is looking at chromium chromium interacting with a di or a bidentate compound in here then interacts with two ammonia with an overall charge of positive three so to find this which is chromium's oxidation state what we do is that we add it with neutral species which is both present in this and that because this compound here is neutral and this compound here is neutral so overall charge of this equals to zero overall charge of this equals to zero and the overall charge of the whole complex in here equals to positive 3 so as a result of that chromium here has a charge of positive 3 now if you go to the periodic table what we notice is that hey chromium in here is present in this particular location here or is found in this location here which is number 6 so it has 6 electrons in here and 3 that were lost plus 6 electrons what we have is D3 so most D3 compounds they kind of exhibit this particular state but it's flexible in a way in general you can see that this is actually a square plane as well and that's about it for this particular example now another example that we have in here is nickel in here and nickel is one of the most fascinating elements as used in organic synthesis and this is actually coordinating with this particular ligand here four of them and this ligand has an overall charge of zero and once you add it with nickel's oxidation state 
the overall oxidation state of this particular complex here equals to zero. So by that way, nickel doesn't lose any electron or gain electrons in this particular process. And what we notice is that nickel is positioned in the same group as platinum, which is number 10. So once you have 10 electrons and you lose no electron, then you remain as a D10. Now D10 compounds, they exhibit a tetrahedral structure and that is actually noticed in this particular diagram here relative to the number of particular ligands attached to nickel in here. So that's about it for this particular compound. Also some other compounds could actually perform a square planar depending on the spin but we'll talk about that in our future videos. Now this last and final one involves two complexes that forms a salt in here. So these two complexes that form a salt in here consist of two transition metals that are in the same group. We have oxenium here and we have that which is ferrous, well, that is iron. So in this particular section you can break it down into two since we have one oxidation state for the whole complex to be positive two. Then what we can do is see what this particular atom oxidation state is. So oxidium here is added with this particular bidentate species in here. We have three of them since the bidentate equals zero in terms of its oxidation state then we have an overall oxidation state of oxonium to be positive two. So in this case here what we have is that this compound or uh, atom is actually located in group eight. So what we notice here is that oh since I have eight electrons zonium loses two electrons in this particular process to form an overall charge of positive two then I have a number of electrons to be six which is a d6 now the next one and the final one is its counter anion which has an overall charge of negative two in here carbon monoxide in here has an overall charge of zero in terms of looking at the structure you can see the structure to be in this particular manner carbon has a negative charge while oxygen has a positive charge and then carbon here has a lone pair and oxygen too has a lone pair in here so if this coordinates four of these coordinates with this particular species this has an overall charge of zero and then ion here plus zero equals negative two and what we recognize is that hey ion and arm positioned in group eight then it means that oh actually i'm increasing in terms of the d electron count going from d8 to d10 so in here i have a d10 and what we recognize from this example is is that oh the structure of the first carbon ion which is carbon carbon ion in here is that oh we have three bidentate species in here or three bidentate ENs here that are present there is a kind of interesting symmetry which is noticed to be octahedral in terms of the shape or geometry while on the other side in terms of iron with the same position the same group but different number of ligands different number of ligands attached we have a tetrahedral or it could actually form a square planar. So that's about it in this particular video. Thanks for following me through this. I truly appreciate it. We'll talk more about how we can actually relate the D electron counts to the structure. And see you on my next video. Be smart and thanks for the support. Bye.